Hi. In this video, uh, we'll be I'll be using modern techniques to produce acorn flour, um, or at least a mix of primitive and modern. But uh, if you already know and you're interested in primitive technologies and primitive way of doing things, I will be talking about it at the end of the video. So you can skip past that straight to there if you want, or if you're um, there was also an oak tree ident that we're going to be doing to so teach you how to identify the oak tree so if you don't want to see or you have already know these things then just skip towards the end where I'll be discussing or letting you know what I think about the primitive technologies of it thank you hello everybody we're out again today and uh, we're collecting acorns because we're going to be making acorn flour and it's the first time we've done it but it's a must year so there's going to be hopefully lots and lots around I've come to an area where I know there's plenty of oaks and at the moment we're just walking from tree to tree looking for good trees and uh, yeah nearly in a minute we'll take you through the ident of an oak and uh, at least one for our Essex area and I think that that should be just about it it should take this is going to take a few days this video so it's going to be drawn together from a few days of experience and working with it and uh, doing all the soaking and things like that but uh, nonetheless hopefully it'll be interesting and you'll be able to learn something from it okay over to Neil common oak Quercus roba hello today we are doing a ident for a tree that almost requires no introduction. This is the common oak. Many of you will already be familiar with it. But I'll take you through some of the main identification features for those who may not be familiar and also to help you with some of the uh, confusion that may be drawn between the common oak and the sessile oak, which is more common in the north. Now we're in Essex today and uh, in the middle of some arable agricultural land. You'll commonly find large oaks left in these, in these landscapes as we have here and they grow differently to a oak within a forest or a woodland. Because they've got no competition for light, they manage to spread their canopy quite wide. And here you see, not very far above the ground, it's already a, a big spreading crown that we have. And that gives it a fairly familiar uh, view upon the, in the landscape and is seen as, uh, because of its age and longevity, as a very impressive tree. Um, I'll bring you in now closer to the tree for some of the main identification features uh, in detail. One of the main identification features that we use is the bark of a tree, especially in the winter months when there's no canopy. Now, the oak tree here is fissured. See the cracks within the bark are quite small but always maintained as the tree grows. So as, uh, as it's expanding it breaks apart on its outer edges. Uh, not all trees do that, the beech tree especially, but you need quite an extensive knowledge of each individual tree to compare them. Um, so for a pure beginner, it's not always a great example of how to identify a tree. One of the more interesting things about the barks of trees are how they show the growth stresses of the tree. And in this tree we have a large cavity, which is common in oaks because they live to such a, an age that they are likely to develop such cavities. And, uh, this is just a nice feature of this tree which is um, actually adapted to quite well. So it's, it doesn't mean that it's in any way unhealthy, it's just an interesting feature. One of the more commonly used identification techniques will be for the leaves. First thing you need to notice about the leaf is how they are arranged on the stem. Now with an oak tree, you'll see that they are alternate along the branch. So once you have one leaf from the stem, on the other side of the branch, uh, stem you'll have another leaf and so on. We call that alternate. And now we'll take one of the single leaves. And this is usually the main identification feature of any tree. This is a simple leaf and it is also lobed. Um, in being simple, it's basically one leaf. Simple. 
and also the lobe describes the outline of the actual leaf itself. Lobes, like, like fingers really, is, or lobes of the ear, you know, just that's the shape of the outline. There are other identification features with leaves that become more intricate as to the colour of the underside, which there is more matte in appearance to uh, the glossy top side. And these generally become uh, more and more detailed as we get into different species. But most of you will be familiar with the oak leaf, so I don't think I need to go into any more detail there. The final identification feature we'll look at today is the, the fruit of the oak tree, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, is the acorn, as iconic as it is. Now, this will grow from a sessile stalk just below a leaf there. And that's an important identification feature as regards to the common oak and the sessile oak, because sometimes this cup will be actually attached to the stem rather than on this stalk. Now with common oak, you have the stalk, so I can help you uh, distinguish it between the Quercus betraya or the sessile oak. Also, the, cap, the cup of the acorn may vary in a turkey oak, where it will have um, hairs basically extending from it. Also, the acorn itself can vary for the, uh, the many other oaks which generally come from America or other areas of the world. But we'll have a look at the common oaks acorn. And uh, it couldn't re really be more familiar than that, could it? I'm sure you're all aware of these from childhood. If we take the actual acorn out, there is the fruit of the oak tree. And that nut is a large fruit which uh, turns into a large tree and is uh, beautiful in itself. Okay, gathering acorns like this, this is grand because um, not only is this a very prolific tree, giving out very small acorns that are um, the smaller ones are better for flower because they're generally sweeter but um, less tannins as well so the uh, the soaking and uh, extraction of the tannins passes a lot quicker and easier but um, it's a must year and they are just throwing them out and down here on the ground around me in this area alone just a few feet there's uh, probably over a thousand and uh, this is just one area of uh, all these oaks. So I'm just sitting now, hand picking them, looking for weevils, etc., and broken shells, and those I'm discarding. But really, this is probably the best way to do it because if you're to rake any or if you're to um, simply gather them up and aim to separate them later, it's you're going to have to do basically just the same thing, but there's a and trick broken shells with but, acorns um, where you put basically a stitch in time saves nine. Nine what? Okay, this is a quick example of the uh, what we're looking for when we're collecting. See these two acorns? That is a weevil hole. A weevil is a little insect, lives in the acorn. And uh, we're going to get rid of this one, just like that. We're going to keep this one. Just like that. Right, ready? It's filming already. Lovely. I think that's just about it. I don't think we need any more. That's just about half full. I think we're going to get about a quarter of flour out of that. And uh, I think that's just about ready. I think this is roughly three or four kilos. Hopefully we'll get half a kilo to a kilo of flour. What do you think? Oh, we've never done this before. No, no. Um, I would say, yeah, between half and a third of the original volume. Yeah. Maybe even less, you know. Um, maybe, maybe more. You never know. Well, if you was going to use this as one of your staple winter crops, 
you'll be spending the next few weeks doing this. Uh, we've only been out two, maybe three hours. So we can't expect a lot. But um, hopefully it's substantial. I'll start off with a bucket load here. Basket load. Oh, there's lots in there that are floating, as you can see. Okay. Well, this is going to be interesting. I'll leave this for a few minutes. Just let them uh, fully decide what they're doing. And then we'll start moving on. Okay. Just scoop them up. Throw them away. Easy. Okay, there's the ones I've thrown away. Discarded light. They're the keepers. I'd say it's about a third, maybe a quarter to a third. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. But now comes the unenviable process of husking. Husking and sorting. And it shouldn't take too much time because I've got a technique I'll show you in a minute. But um, let's just say. Neil is very lucky to be having his exam next week and that means he doesn't have to help me Right, this is a special treat for Neil and all you martial artists out there This is Zen and the art of nut cracking That is a perfect crack it's just enough to get a wedge in and it indicates that the nut is healthy. Oops! <laughs> Got me. Right. Zen. Oh. oh no, it was fine. You see, the uh, unhealthy nuts can often uh, split badly. Uh, they'll crush. They crush as opposed to split the unhealthy ones. Okay, we have our acorns, at least this is about a third of the ones in the basket and uh, as you, that's loads, as you can see that's absolutely tons, I'm really happy with that because there's so much flour here and it means I'm going to be able to try a couple of experiments with the others. So um, the husking was very interesting because it was pretty difficult um, in time consuming but um, nonetheless there was, as you can see, I, I chose a good way to do it because we have whole nuts. But these nuts now are rubbery and soft, which is very interesting. And um, I think the baking would have made all the difference. Baking would have made all the difference. It would have made them hard and brittle. But because I can't crush them myself because they're too soft, we're going to be compromising with this today. But I'll be doing some experiments with bacon and see where we go there. So, let's just get some of these going. Back in the old days, they used to do all kinds of things where they would start to and bake and things like that. But you know, really, 
because you only get so much there and uh... Yeah, I think that's a relevant point about modern usage. So, let's have a look at this now then. Oh, that looks absolutely grand. That just coarsely ground. That looks absolutely brilliant. Smells great too. Smells like fruit, funnily enough. And uh, yep, this is going to be just perfect. Okay, I'll finish these off then. Right then, have a look at that. Look, it's completely full. Because I'm so happily impressed with this, you got so much out of it, I'm extremely happy. I even fed some to the birds because it wouldn't fit in the can. But uh, now comes the leaching. Just going to put it in the bowl and then add water. Let it sit. And that's all. So let me just show you what that looks like. No, that's too much for that bowl. I'm going to have to split it up or I think I might have a bigger can. We'll have a look. Right, there you go. Came up to about there, about halfway. And then fill the rest up with water. So that's going to be there now for the next 12, 14 hours until I strain it and uh, refill it. I'll be doing that probably every 12 to 14 hours for the next few days. So, I'll get back to you when I'm doing that I suppose. Better be worth it. <laughs> Okay, now there's no way I can do this in my kitchen, so, look, well, I mean, I've been doing it in my kitchen, but I can't film. <laughs> so, let's do it in the bathroom. Look, there I am in a reflection. Right, this is my gubbins. I've done this, this is, what's 312s, whatever 312s is. I've done this, uh, this is my third time, and um, it's, that's your oak ground oak in there. It's going into the sieve and then the good stuff is going in there. But we're also going to rinse it and I'll basically run you through what I've been doing over these last day and a half or whatever it is, two days now. Okay, let's get to it. Right, first we take this and we're going to pour it into the sieve. Looks like pond water. Frankly, it smells a little like it too. That's actually a good sign. That means a lot of the tannins are coming out and the uh, oaks are starting to rot slightly. Now, right in the middle here, there's a cloudy, thick, looks smoky in the water. And that's the tannins. And then down at the bottom there now, starting to really look like tea, which is the same stuff, of course. Oops. Right. Okay. I've put something in the bottom here to slow everything down. But I hope you can see by the colour of the water. In the east. Look at that colour of that water. As much as it looks like my regular bath water, it's not. It's um well, that brown is all tannin, so there's still quite a bit in there. But hopefully, the next stage of the process will help. Something they did yesterday. I'll just wait a minute for this to go down. the colour. It's much the same as it was when it was in the bath. Hopefully we can change this. Right. This is just 
water. Warm water. Doesn't have to be warm, it can be um can be cold. But warm works slightly better. But what we'll actually be looking for is not only a change in colour like that um, in the water, but a change in the colour in the actual acorns themselves. And already I can see it's starting to work very well. So this is going to take a few minutes now to just make sure we've soaked everything through. So I'll just be doing this for a couple of minutes. So the water coming out is almost clear now. Let me just show you that. Still looks like clean, clear water. Mm. It only has a mild taste of uh, oak and cannon. So that's pretty good. But I'll just keep doing it for a few minutes more just to make sure everything is thorough. See the difference there, glass water. Right, let's just try a bit because I've been doing this for a couple of days now, it should be nice and clean. Mmm, tastes good. Still got a touch of uh, touch of tannin to it, but uh, only a tiny touch. And uh, frankly, it tastes a bit like a fresh hazelnut. So, mmm, yeah, yeah. I think uh, that's very good. That's probably edible now. Um, if you roasted it, especially. But I think we'll give it a little bit more. Let me uh, pop this in here. Do the other half. Mmm, that's very good actually. I think we're ready for baking. If I don't like it after it's baked, I can always wash it again. Okay, what an interesting afternoon. Um, after traipsing about town and getting a couple of volunteers, then we've decided that this is essentially taste exactly like or almost identical to hazelnuts, just raw green not green, but raw hazelnuts. It tastes almost exactly the same. So I'm going to say that this is adequate. This is ready to go and this has been leached enough. Um, it took two days of changing the water every 12 hours and washing, rinsing every time as well. It might have been ready last time, but I put it on for another 12 anyway. But now what we're going to do is we're going to bake it. I'm going to spread it out on these trays and dry it. Um, okay. I'll get back to you. Pardon me. I'll get back to you when that's on. Right. There's a load there and there. Um, it's just a shallow setting. It's not deep at all. Uh, it's only barely a few millimetres, just as thick as the uh, couple of layers of coarse ground flour, uh, coarse ground nut, but what I do know is about this, because I don't know if we're really supposed to be baking or drying or cooking or doing what we're doing, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat it like um, a nut and bake it, but I'm going to dry it first. And there's one thing I know about this for sure, and that's there's a hell of a lot of it, because that's only half of the sieve. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do this probably four or five times. But, you know, it'll be worth it, I think. So, you're going in at just about 100. Um, that's, I think that's Celsius we have in the UK. Anyway, going in at 100. And I'm going to do, if you watched my whore jetty video, just leave it open and crack like that. And I reckon 15 minutes, that should be a lot drier than it was. 20 minutes after a little stir, that should be bone dry. And then we'll start thinking about tasting and baking. And I think this is going to be really successful. I'm extremely pleased with the amount and to be honest, I'm really looking forward to it. I think this is going to be great. Okay, I'll get back to you when that's dried. Right, I was just tidying up the kitchen while we waited. And uh, all of a sudden it turned from the smell of, of water drying to the smell of something incredibly delicious that wants to be eaten. It's very hard to describe, but it, it smells like, uh, I don't know, like toasted cereal or something like that. Like flapjacks or something, you know? It's... It's quite unique, but it smells like that. Anyway, what we're going to do is, excuse the spatula, we'll just have a little look now, and I might give this a stir. Oh yeah, it's definitely got a biscuity sound. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is coming along beautifully. Right, I'm just going to run the spatula through all this, stir it all around and give it five more minutes. So I'll make sure everything's done little bits of steam coming off there and then uh, then we'll think about doing the next lot I think yeah that's that's rather grand <laughs> okay right it's not coming along quite as quickly as anticipated because I think now the nuts are actually releasing the moisture from inside and cooking so I think what I will do now is close it up and actually cook them and hopefully this will bake them thoroughly dry, make them hard, and they can be crushed into a flour. Yes, I think it looks like I'm just going to have to sit down for a bit and I guess I'll just have to read a book or something. Okay. Well, this is what it looks like after a trip through the blender. What do you think of that, huh? I think that's rather pretty. Um, it's coarse, still, because I don't have a blender, I had to go and borrow it, but there's still loads of powdery finery in there, and uh, it's basically meal, and it's, uh, out. Mmm. Wow. It's delicious. It's certainly tastier than flour. I mean, I never would dream of doing that with flour. But um, that actually has quite a lot of taste to it. That's actually quite delicious. It smells fantastic. At the moment, I bet that would make a great biscuit. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'd be tempted to do that later. Uh, that's roughly half of... What I had before, yep. here's the other half still soaking in the sink, just drying off there, and uh, so that's that's a quarter, that's a quarter, in there is a quarter, in there is a half of the entirety. So, very exciting, I'm extremely happy with that, not only by the quantity, but by the actual taste, that's pretty phenomenal. So, in conclusion, um, there's a couple of lessons I've learned, and as much as I'm very satisfied with what I have, very, very satisfied in fact, there's a great deal of it worth it of the reward, there's a couple of notes on primitive technologies I would like to make, 
um, back in the day, they they would I think they would have almost definitely done uh, still water draining and leaching because the sack or the um, this is the point you see we didn't have a, a fine enough sack saying that though of course the basketry methods would have been far in advance so it is possible that they would have done draining through the running water but um, that is an interesting point I thought and I would be very interested to know how they used to do it exactly but both methods seem to work very well then there's the husking and if I, husking and baking and if I baked the acorns first then the husking would have been vastly easier and also if I was winnowing where I'd um, weaved a small sieve or something of the like just like you would wheat and chaff then again that would have been a lot easier and probably the time taken for the reward again would have been halved if not more by doing such processing but um, not that what I did was particularly difficult it was just time consuming just like winnowing is anyway and yes I think the rubbery nut once husked as well would serve well to be baked because I had to crush it as you saw through or you didn't see through a mechanism but when it comes to crushing if these nuts had been baked after husked then they would have lost all their moisture and they would have become firm and easy to pound certainly in fact that is almost certainly the way they would have done it with the winnowing and with the uh, leaching in either still water or running water I haven't made up my mind on that yet because both are very acceptable and I believe that there would have been boxes and other things of the like, birch bark containers which could have contained the water to do such a thing as well as just a hollowed out trunk that would have been uh, burned out etc and uh, yeah, sitting in the forest but when you're talking about such large degrees it would have been to feed a village or a tribe then you would have had to have made it more efficient than the way I did it but saying that of course it would have been a different pace of life and there would have been different duties to take care of so perhaps this would have been one of the jobs which could have been put on the side but um, let me think I think that's about it there was a oh yes yeah, so a note on the actual content of the flour no raising. The lack of gluten has meant that it's not going to raise like a normal bread. We've tried it many times in many ways and it hasn't worked. What we have concluded is that they make excellent dumplings and biscuits and things like that. And any hard roll or hard bread that you could wish for. Flat bread. It's extremely nutritious. Very, very tasty. But difficult to work with if you want to make standard breads. So I wouldn't recommend it. It has a beautiful flavour absolutely delicious and of course it's highly nutritious and you can feel it in comparison then there's sorry I forgot what I was going to say oh, yes. just a quick list of the uses that you could definitely use it for you can use it just as a couple of spoonfuls with, with some coffee very very tasty I wouldn't call it coffee though, I would say it's much more like um, a milky oat drink like the for want of not to mention some trade names but uh, Bovril and uh, Horlicks and Ovaltine and things like this which I, I believe are quite accustomed to all over the western hemisphere but um, it's a milky multi drink and that is the best way to have it by far I would say with a touch of cinnamon and things like that but I think that's about it There's the drinking the bread you can always use it to add to stews and things and it just as plain flour for thickening but it also does make excellent dumplings like I said and I think uh, in conclusion I'll be making at one point in the future because I certainly have lots of it left I'm going to be making um, some nice honey oat biscuits and uh, I think that will be rather delicious with some raisins or something like that but anyway, thanks for watching um, 
I hope you found it interesting, I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in doing it in a more primitive style, then please let me know if you watch this. But, um, yes, in conclusion, I think it, this is one of the best and one of the most rewarding projects I've, I've done. So, thank you again. Goodbye. See you next time.